55 Cancri E, officially named Jansen in 2015, is an exoplanet you've likely heard of before. It's a large rocky planet eight times more massive than Earth and twice the radius of Earth, likely covered in a global lava ocean. Jansen was the first ever super-Earth planet ever found around a main sequence star, but you've likely heard of it for a different reason. People say it could be made of diamonds. But what is Jansen actually like? Is there any real truth to the idea that it's a planet made of diamonds? And what else do we really know about it? Welcome to episode 3 of my iconic exoplanet series, where I revisit some of the most well-known exoplanets to see what information we actually know about them, what makes them so unique, and hopefully give you a better understanding of the planets you've already heard about. This video will be about the love world of Jansen, or 55 Cancri E. This is part of a daily upload week on my channel, and there will be a total of 5 iconic exoplanets this week. When you're done watching this one, make sure to check out the other two iconic exoplanets episodes, about 51 Pegasi b or Domidium, and Kepler 186f. Jansen was discovered in 2004, and was, at the time, designated 55 Cancri E. It was later named in 2015 along with its star and the other four planets in the system as part of the IAU's Name Exoworlds contest. The entire system was named after European astronomers, with the star being named Copernicus, and the five planets being named Jansen, Galileo, Brya, Harriet, and Lipperhey, respectively. However, Copernicus itself is also a binary star with the small red dwarf 55 Cancri b, which wasn't given an official name. Copernicus is a K-type star about 90% the mass of the Sun, but much older, at somewhere around 8.6 billion years old. This puts the star at the very end of the main sequence phase, and it's currently transitioning into a subgiant and will eventually become a full red giant later. When it was discovered, Jansen was expected to complete one orbit of Copernicus every 2.8 days. However, in 2010 this was revised, and the planet's true orbital period was found to be just 18 hours. This type of short orbit is very common around red dwarf stars, where the systems are more compact, but Copernicus is very close to the Sun in size. So, one of the things we know for certain about Jansen is that it's very hot. We also know it's tidally locked to Copernicus, with a permanent day and night side. This means that the day side and night side have drastically different temperatures, with the day side being at over 6,300 degrees Fahrenheit, or 3,500 Celsius, and the night side being just 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,370 Celsius. Of course, both of these temperatures are still extremely hot, but this also means there's a temperature difference of over 3,000 degrees between the day and night side of the planet. This is drastic enough that some materials will be gases on the day side, but would condense into liquids or solids on the night side. For example, iron melts at about 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit, which would make it a solid material on the night side, but the day side is hot enough to vaporize it. It's likely that these insane temperatures cause Jansen to have a global lava ocean on both the day and night side. But that's not the only thing that makes the planet hell. Jansen has a surface gravity over two times stronger than Earth, because it's eight times more massive. This high mass is actually interesting, because it's very rare that rocky planets even get this big in the first place. For example, the planet Anaiposha is about 8.4 Earth masses, but because it's much cooler than Jansen, it's a mini Neptune with a very dense atmosphere similar to an ice giant. Jansen is likely so hot that any primordial hydrogen dominated atmosphere it had was blasted away during its formation, leaving only the rocky material behind. This is where we get into the planet's composition, and likely the reason you clicked on this video. Is Jansen actually a planet made of diamonds? Well, the short answer is that it's a possibility, but far from confirmed. People have suggested that Jansen has a large quantity of diamonds, potentially up to one third of the planet's mass, for a few reasons. One being its star, Copernicus, has a high carbon to oxygen ratio. It has far more carbon than the Sun, and because stars and planets that form around them usually form out of the same material, it's not a bad assumption that all of Copernicus's planets might be similarly carbon rich. The second is its density. Jansen is about two times wider than Earth, and because we know both its mass and radius, we know its density. At first, this density actually seemed to suggest that Jansen was made of a large amount of water, which would make it some kind of ultra-hot steam planet. However, hydrogen, which we would expect to see if this scenario was true, was not detected. The other possibility that would explain the data is that Jansen could be a carbon planet, and be carbon-rich like its star. The third reason is because when you put carbon under a lot of heat and pressure, it tends to turn into diamond. And if you want heat and pressure, Jansen is pretty much the best possible planet for that. So, one possibility is that Jansen is a carbon planet, and because of its high temperature and mass, up to one third of the planet is composed of solid diamond. However, this is not actually known for certain. 
there are still several other possible structures that could explain what we see on Jansen without the need for a diamond planet. It's a possibility, but not the only possibility. Speaking of unknowns about Jansen, possibly one of the most hotly debated things about the planet is what the hell is happening with its atmosphere. Observations of Jansen have yielded dramatically different results for what its atmosphere is made of. In 2016, the Hubble Space Telescope detected hydrogen cyanide and no water vapor, which would only be possible if the planet's atmosphere is primordial, meaning made mostly of hydrogen and helium. Just a year later in 2017, however, the Spitzer Space Telescope's observations indicated the planet's atmosphere was only slightly thicker than Earth's, and could contain both nitrogen and oxygen. But then in 2020, another study failed to detect any helium, and a 2012 study failed to detect hydrogen, both studies indicating that Janssen actually probably doesn't have a primordial atmosphere. It was then suggested that Janssen had a very thin atmosphere made of vaporized metals. But then that all changed again in 2024, when the James Webb Space Telescope detected both carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide on the planet, which ruled out the vaporized metals scenario and suggested the planet actually has a thick atmosphere rich in those two chemicals. Right now, the JWST observations are the most likely to be correct, and those are the observations I have chosen to base my depiction of Janssen on. However, these observations have clearly been wrong before, so it might not be a guarantee that this is what the atmosphere is actually like. However, there are some other pieces of evidence that may support it. The authors of the paper found the carbon-rich atmosphere mentioned that it could be sustained by volcanic activity on Janssen, mainly outgassing from its global lava ocean. And there is actually evidence that large-scale volcanism is occurring on this planet. Observations of temperature variations on the planet could be explained by large clouds of dust obscuring parts of it, making it temporarily appear colder than usual. Janssen is a massive planet and clearly has enough heat to sustain volcanic activity, though these observations could also be explained by a disk of dust in the same orbit as the planet. Personally, if I had to guess, I think Janssen likely does have volcanic activity and a carbon-rich atmosphere. I think it could be made of a lot of carbon, but we'll have to wait for more observations to confirm that. But that's just my opinion, and I could be wrong. Another interesting thing about Janssen though is how close it is to Galileo, the next planet in the system. Galileo is a hot Jupiter at least 80% the mass of Jupiter. We don't know its exact radius yet, but Galileo is likely a pretty large object in the Jansenian night sky. In my last Iconic Exoplanets video, I talked about the other four planets in the Kepler-186 system in addition to F. However, I've already covered the entire 55 Cancri system in detail in my Grand Tour of 55 Cancri video. So for now, I'll say Galileo is a hot gas giant, Brya is a smaller hot gas giant, Harriet is a temperate ice giant, and Liberhe is a large Jupiter analog. It's a pretty interesting system, and Janssen is only one member of a whole family of interesting planets. Luckily, Janssen is also an extremely well-studied planet, so there are a lot of interesting things we can say about it, like its evidence of volcanic activity to what's in its atmosphere. However, there's still a ton we don't know, and even if Janssen isn't truly made of diamonds, which is a possibility, this is still an incredibly interesting planet and worthy of the attention it gets. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, stay tuned for the rest of the Iconic Exoplanet series, which I'll be trying to upload one episode of every day this week.